Hello, everyone. Today, we are going to be looking at the effect of osmosis on cells, on both plant and animal cells. So we already know osmosis is defined as the movement of water particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So whenever we see the term osmosis, you know right away that we are focusing on, oops, we are focusing on water particles or the movement of water particles. Um, let's take a look at this apparatus below. So here we have um, an apparatus, or you can think of it as a device. And this apparatus is, uh, contains a selectively permeable membrane. And this selectively permeable membrane only allows uh, water to pass through. Okay, so um, represented in the blue here, we have water, of course, the solvent. And represented in red, these red dots are the solute, which let's assume are salt. Now, of course, these, uh, these solutes can be anything. They can be salt particles, sugar particles. They can be uh, proteins and they can be vitamins, minerals. Um, but in this example, I'm assuming that they are salt particles. All right, so um, notice that this apparatus has two sides, side A and side B. Uh, if we were to, to talk about the concentration, okay, so the concentration, um, or concentration is basically the amount, okay? Amount relative to, so amount relative to. Um, and if you remember, whenever we have a solution, so if we were to define a solution, just as a quick review, a solution is made up of two things, right? So a solution is made up of a solute, solute which again, I'm representing in the red, dissolved in a particular solvent. And this solvent is usually going to be water. So in this case, it's water and it's usually gonna be water because water is, if you remember, the universal solvent. So whenever we have a solution, we are talking about a solute dissolved in a solvent. So here in this apparatus, we have um, a solution made up of water and salt. And you'll notice that on side B, we have a high concentration Okay, of salt, right, or of solute. Now, logically speaking, if we have a high concentration of salt or if, if we have a high concentration of the solute and we know that a solution is composed of a solute and a solvent, if we have a lot of the solute, then this means that we will have less of the solvent, correct? Because the solute has taken up more space or more concentration and therefore you have less space left for the solvent. So since we have a high concentration of the solute, this means that we have low concentration of water. And by the way, these brackets that I'm, that I'm drawing here, whenever you see these brackets, these brackets mean concentration. I just don't wanna keep writing the word concentration each time, it's such a long word. So in chemistry, you can actually represent, uh, you know, the idea of a concentration by these brackets. So low concentration, I put the brackets around the word low to represent a low concentration. Now let's look at side B. So for side B, we have a, we have the opposite, right? We have much less solutes here. So we have low concentration of solute and we have a high concentration of water. Okay, so according to our definition of osmosis, we know that water is gonna move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration of water, right? So in this case, we have a high concentration of water on side B and a low concentration of water on side A. And therefore, since this selectively permeable membrane allows water to pass through, water will move from side B to side A, it will move this way. So water moves from side B to side A. 
Now, over time, if we leave this apparatus and we allow all the water to pass through, you will notice that you will end up with a higher amount of water on side A than on side B, right? So you have the water level in side A rose because all the water kind of moved to this, to this, uh, to this direction. And the water level in side B decreases because the uh, water kind of left side B to go to side A because of osmosis. Okay, so we've already established that a solution is made from a solute dissolved in a solvent. Um, let's look at some examples of different types of solutions. So whenever we are describing a solution, there are actually three ways that we can describe a solution or there are actually three types of solutions out there. Isotonic solutions, hypotonic solutions, and hypertonic solutions. Um, let's take a look at these words. Specifically, let's look at the prefixes of each word. Okay, so a prefix is the first part of, of the word. And each one will kind of give us a hint about what type of solution we are looking at. The word iso means same or equal. Hypo means less than. And hyper means more than. Now remember that a solution is composed of a concentration of a specific solute dissolved in a concentration of a specific solvent. Or in other words, um, whenever we are describing a solution, we are describing the concentrations of the solutes and the solvents in, uh, relative to one another, okay? So isotonic solutions have equal amounts or equal concentrations of solutes and solvents. Hypotonic solutions contain more sol uh, uh, less solutes, okay, so less dissolved solutes. There's a, there's a lower concentration of the solute than the solvent. And finally, hypertonic solutions contain more solutes than solvents, or there is a higher concentration of the solute than the solvent. And we can see that in the images that I've drawn. So let's assume that we have a specific type of cell represented in red here. Actually, let me keep the colors consistent. So the red here represents a red blood cell, a specific cell. And around it, this is the solution that I'm talking about. So the solution is found outside this red blood cell. All right, and this solution contains a solute shown in yellow and a solvent. The solute represented in yellow, let's assume is sugar. It could be salt, it could be anything actually. I'm assuming it's sugar. And then of course the, um, the water here is representing our solvent. Now inside the cell, keep in mind that inside the cell, we also have a specific solution, right? Because inside the cell, we have a cytoplasm and cytoplasms also contain solutes and solvents. However, when I'm describing solutions as being isotonic, hypo, hypotonic or hypertonic, we're assuming that we are talking about the solution that is found um, outside of the cell. Although it is also correct to use these terms to describe the inside of the cell. Because remember, the inside of the cell, again, is a cytoplasm, which means that it is basically a solution. It contains dissolved solutes. But just to not confuse ourselves, if I refer to a solution, I will specify, I will tell you if it's outside or inside. But for the most part, if I'm talking about a solution, I'm talking about the solution outside of the cell. Okay, so let's look at this first example, an isotonic solution. So notice that an isotonic solution contains equal amounts of solutes and solvents, both inside and outside of the cell. So we can actually count the amount of uh, solutes found outside of the cell, and you'll notice that there are five, okay? Um, and then inside the cell, one, two, three, four, five, same amount. So notice that we have the same amount of solutes, both inside and outside of the cell. Um, and again, logically speaking, if we have equal amounts of solutes, both inside and outside of the cell, it means that we have equal amount of solvents, both inside and outside of the cell. Now, since there is uh, equal amounts of water inside and outside of the cell, 
water will not really go anywhere, right? Because osmosis says that water moves from an area of high to low concentration. And in this scenario, in an isotonic solution, there are equal amounts of water inside and outside of the cell. So I'm gonna write that as a note, equal concentration of water inside and outside of the cell. No, oops, no net movement. So the water will not really move one way or another kind of thing, right? It just kind of goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And the cell doesn't really change. So the cell, sh cell stays the same. Nothing happens to the cell. Um, a perfect example of an isotonic solution is our blood. Okay, and that's where all of our cells are housed. All of our cells are traveling in our blood. And of course it has to be isotonic so that our, our cells remain in homeostasis. Now let's look at example two, which is a hypotonic solution. Notice that in this scenario, the solution outside of the cell is hypotonic, which means that it has low concentration of solute and a high concentration of water. So low concentration of solute, there's less solute than water outside of the cell. Inside of the cell, it's the opposite, right? You have, it's, it has a higher concentration of um, solute. And a low concentration of water. Now, according to osmosis, we know that water moves from an area of high to low concentration, and therefore water will move from outside of the cell where there is high concentration of water to the inside of the cell where there is a low concentration of water. So water will move this way as indicated by the arrows. So um, to kind of summarize this, we have um, high concentration, of water outside of the cell. So therefore, water moves into the cell by osmosis, because osmosis says that water moves from an area of high to low concentration. And then finally, the cell will swell and it might even burst in if it's an animal cell so in animal cells because animal cells um have just a cell membrane if they fill up with enough water they might burst now plant cells will become turgid okay which means that they do not burst they do not burst because plant cells have the extra protection of the cell membrane, which prevents them from exploding if they fill up with too much water. Let's look at the last example, which is a hypertonic solution. And a hypertonic solution, as you can see, has a high concentration of solute and a low concentration of water outside of the cell. And the opposite is happening inside of the cell. So inside the cell, you have, um, relative to the outside, you have high concentration of water and a low concentration of solute. Now, according to osmosis, water moves from an area of high to low concentration. Since we have a high concentration of water inside the cell and a low concentration of water outside of the cell, then water will move outside of the cell in this direction, as indicated by the arrows. Okay, so you have, um, you have a low concentration of water inside the cell and a high concentration of water Oh, sorry. I messed those up. Low concentration of water outside of the cell. So low concentration of water outside of the cell and therefore water moves out
Okay, so um, as you can see in the hypertonic solution, there is low amounts of water outside of the cell. So the water moves out of the cell by osmosis. So it moves from an area of high concentration inside the cell to an area of low concentration of water outside of the cell by osmosis. And therefore the cell will shrink if it's an animal cell uh, or it will wilt. So the plant basically will wilt if it is a um, plant cell. <laughs> 